as 2019 draws to a close, it's the most important list of the year. It's now ready. Yes, my top 10 technically and graphically accomplished titles throughout the year. And 2019 saw some treats, that's for sure. PSVR and VR as a whole took a shot up. And last year's winner in Red Dead Redemption had a re-release on PC, which would have really hit this list as well. But I've discounted it because it was last year's winner. Obviously, I can't cover everything here, so it's a subjective list. You may not like it, you may disagree, you may totally agree. Whichever way, please leave your comments down below and also subscribe to keep the channel going and growing. But diving into the titles on the boil, next year I really am looking forward to VR taking a ramp up. This year we've seen a huge shift in terms of developers getting used to the medium and actually pushing those experiences in terms of what VR offers and how different it is to 2D gaming. Blood and Truth was an honourable mention for me as I think it's a very impressive looking title both from a technical stance and a visual one once you play the game. It uses lots of techniques on very limited hardware and impresses throughout the title. It would have made my list had other titles not just pipped it to the post. It was a very good looking title. There are better ones on the PC and next year I really am looking forward to Half-Life's return in VR and that really is going to change the game. But other honourable mentions come from many other titles. My Friend Pedro was an amazing game to play. It's not the most visually accomplished, but it is fun. And it really takes me back to games where you just dive in, play a bit, and get used to the skills and the techniques that it deserves. And these indie titles never get the kind of praise and credits they deserve. And this one is one you should check out, and it is free on Game Pass. Not the most technically accomplished game, but one I'm sure you'll enjoy. Shenmue 3 is another. Yes, it has quite a lot of issues and it misses out on my top slot for most of those. It does take you back to a time that was far simpler and it really tries to recreate the time back then. The last one is EA's massive release from Respawn Entertainment's Jedi The Fallen Order. It really is a title that deserved to be somewhere in the mid top 10 of my list here. But due to the continued issues throughout the title that I covered extensively in my previous analysis of all four, four formats on consoles, it really misses my list due to the fact that those issues, the performance levels and the resolution issues and all the other things wrapped around it really take the shine off a title that should have really delivered more overall. But it doesn't distract from the fact that right now it is a much better looking game and it performs much better due to all the performance improvements that have come since patches. But it really is missed out on my top slot just to the fact that it didn't really launch the condition it should have done come day one. Yeah, I'm okay. You all right? No, you're not doing that again. This feudal Japan focused from a software title was stepping into its own big boots, emerged from the shadow of Tenshu from which its origins are owed. This was a title that benefited from Activision I feel in many areas. None of these come from its unique style, art, design and relentless difficulty. I may bore many, but these games always take me back to the ones I grew up with on the C64 or BBC Micro. Tough, unfair even, and thankless, but they compelled you to be better, to try harder and learn the routines and the rhythms. Anyone who has played Manic Miner, Game Over, Big Mac, or any other challenging title from the early 8-bit days will know all too well the mixture of frustration and fulfilment they offer. Sekiro nails that again and again, but with a graphical flair all its own. On a technical level, the engine and team have not improved to any significant degree, and the ever-present frame pacing issues remain from all previous titles, which does muddy the waters and is why I place it lower in my list. But what they lack in technical chops, they make up for in artistic flair and level design. Right from the off, you are greeted with a moody, emaciated lead with a typical samurai swagger and muted style. The world is furnished with a gaggle of disturbed looking enemies, exaggerated designs and animations all dismembered to a tranquil backdrop of lushy grassy fields 
bright castle grounds, blazing pagodas, dark tunnels, and much, much more. The use of light, space, darkness, and both physical and animation-based nuances and help inform you of the high-risk danger and best method of assassination. It is within this strong design center and juxtaposition of mood and vision that really has you admiring the moments in the game, from atop a rain-soaked rooftop or inbound general on horseback. The battle never ends, but Sekiro is one of the most polished from software titles I have enjoyed, even if that is sometimes through gritted teeth. Still doesn't miss out on my top 10 list, and it is one of the most enjoyable and rewarding titles I have played and enjoyed throughout 2019. Mortal Kombat has never been known for pulling its punches, both in gameplay and gore. Fighting games themselves have been around since the 70s and Sega's Heavyweight Champion series. But Mortal Kombat has long legs and a legacy itself and it's now on its 11th update. A huge hit for NetherRealm Studios in 2019, propped up by a collection of DLC additions and tie-in characters from Gears of War to the Terminator. The core hook of gory battles and claret spilling fatalities remains, but the quality delivered from Unreal 3 aptly demonstrate that numbers aren't everything. Now these are some of the most impressive, disgusting, detailed and exquisitely animated character models in games. Right from the pre-match banter, x-ray attacks or gut-wrenching finishes, you are in for an audio and visual treat across all formats at high refresh rates and input latency. The story mode really ramps up the visual quality and although it still has that Saturday morning matinee with uh, an 18 rated certificate slapped on top, the visuals are in engine and run within the same quality as the real time ones in the game themselves and it really gives you an idea just how good the team have pushed that Unreal Engine 3 here. Arenas are not only well constructed, if a 2.5D layout, but they are littered with novel animation touches, pre-baked effects such as the smoke plumes, high resolution materials, fluid animation, and those always impressive attacks that let you feel each blow inside and out. <laughs> But it is the combatants where the bespoke and augmented Unreal 3 spur off really shows the benefits here. Skin looks real at times, soft fleshy epidermis tones, silky smooth motion, zoomed in impacts, bone crunching sounds and gore that looks to be straight out of a Tom Savini flick. And as far as character models, shading quality and sheer poly count, the results speak for themselves and are as close to beating another title in my list that also targets the same performance metric. It's bloody great. Finish him. Now, indie titles, as mentioned at the start, never really get the praise they deserve, and they're really closing the gap. No more evident than in this French crafted period piece, which quickly was tagged as The Last of Us with Rats. A sign of the need to pigeonhole everything, but it is much more than that. With a compelling story mixed within real historic events, it has a charm and appeal all its own. Somber at times, like only Europeans tend to do, but still with enough hope to drive you on. Now, I covered more in my full analysis back at launch, but the game is not only an excellent tale, but it also stands out as a showcase for this small team, both on a technical level, with this being not Unreal or Crytek, but their own in-house and bespoke engine, offering all the modern benefits of a PBR-based material systems, deferred lighting, real-time lights and shadows, herd-based AI and huge geometry draw, voxel-based fog volumes, it really leaves little out of the equation. And to factor in that they've built all this from scratch in-house by using nothing off the shelf, but a team this small and results so impressive, it really does deserve far more than a round of applause. And I recommend you go out and check it out. It's on sale at the moment as well. 
Now, in addition to this, the artistic style and creation that covers the entire gamut of medieval style, lush countryside, bright sunshine vistas to dank and deserted castle grounds. It really covers the gamut across all visual styles. The scurrying rat hordes delivering a chilling capture of the real thing, and the use of naked flames and darkness reminds me of a more modern take on Thief. Now, what really stands out is they have used the techniques not only to drive the image, but also the story and gameplay. Light is both an ally and an enemy, and the CPU batch coordinated rats are just the same. The use of shadow and light is not only visually compelling, but made all the more authentic by the pixel based lighting model and dynamic shadows dancing off ceilings. Now, if a large first party studio made this game, I doubt it would look that much better, animation aside, as that is really the only area that could do with a step up. This is no detriment to the game or the quality delivered here. A cracking game to play and a gorgeous one to admire. Rats and all. L'inquisition est ici, Hugo. Tu veux qu'il t'emmène? Ne refais plus jamais ça, tu as compris? Bon, d'accord. How you want to do this? Well, me your shotgun. I'll walk point. Ben Studios have been around for a long time, bringing Bubsy into 3D to filter in Logan's inner bond, and even getting Nathan Drake mobile on the Vita. Movement was another focus in their PS4 debut as The Walking Dead went all 28 days on us in Days Gone. The post-apocalyptic zombie game was something very new for them and maximised its Unreal Engine 4 with exceptional calibre on both PlayStation platforms. All you see here is from the base PS4 and the sheer scale of foliage, geometry, character detail and those vast zombie hordes create many impressive set pieces throughout. Now, one of its standout features, aside the gaggle of zombies, is the dynamic time of day and weather system. Wind picks up, trees violently jostle, rain pours down as object materials and their roughness composite layer is reduced to provide that wet specular reflectance and build the atmosphere. Puddles build up on the ground adding SSR reflections and light tones and image probes shift the look of the scene and mood. The artistic direction here is very, very good. Huge expanses of America splay out before you from snow-capped mountaintops, rocky ridges to dank dark tunnels with just your spotlight and GI bounce also included. Complementing the dense and full game world are the rich and supremely well animated character models also adorn the title. These real time cinematics are generally up to the level of other first party teams with good direction and pretty good acting. I do find the story and flow of missions though to be a little inconsistent, but I enjoyed the gritty sections, the grim tone and the anti-hero protagonist that does not follow the trend. In fact, I quite enjoy the fact that characters in the game look more realistic and less Hollywood than many other titles. It does have quite a fair share of fault glitches across the game though, with the biggest being the jarring loading into black screen between gameplay and cutscenes, and it can break the flow at times. It also has some poor game choices and game layout with some glitches that can actually break the game in repeating sections but there is a diamond in the rough there and there is lots of options I think to improve this and expand on it outside of this particular game and I'm looking forward to a sequel where it could really be another Uncharted 2 moment. It must also be praised just how much performance the team have squeezed out of the PS4 with a demanding engine as the memory limits and demands show up much more at other times on the same engine so this really is a showcase of how much you can squeeze out of unreal engine 4 and on that it really shines bright glitches faults and bugs aside it does have some great moments throughout and it certainly is one of the most impressive looking unreal engine 4 titles we've seen this generation you goddamn liar do it No, no! I see you. You armed up? Now, what is the price of originality? <laughs> Captain Price. He is back, more cockney, just as badass, and now a little younger too. In what seems to be a never ending trend of remakes, reboots, rebirths, and just playing cash in, the next COD is nothing new, but manages to deliver some great moments and varied levels across its campaign. And the multiplayer I covered in detail along with the premium console versions back at launch in single player. And here it is where the lion's share of the engine enhancements are focused. Just having PBR based
face shading is not enough in the here and now and you have to stand out and they have done that again and again here from each dusty rock wooden desk stone wall or glowing iris under night visions goggles this game's materials are top draw backing this up is the accomplished post effect suite bokeh depth of field ssr frustum based voxel fog procedural construction per object motion blur tessellated geometry high polygon topology and motion captured animations much much more you spend moment to moment here aghast at the quality your machine is pumping out again at that high 60 fps or 16 millisecond refresh rate something quite common in many games this year in fact now like many others on this list it can at times struggle to hold that on some machines but this does not belittle the quality and the high achievement from an engine fully focused on performance with arguably the best input times in the business it always feels so damn good to play and in fact the combat and gun battles in certain segments here are in my opinion the best in the series elevated immensely by some of the best and most gritty and weighted animations ever lavished into an fps they always feel satisfying from the camera twitch on shot or reload or even the multiple animation sets used for ad's or free hands when you're aiming down the scopes and you're down to your very last shell consistency is the biggest letdown here with highs and lows being quite wide points the house raid is sky high yet the embarrassing russian dude versus kids moment shows some weaker assets and oh, cringe worthy moments in the campaign but luckily the highs far outweigh the lows and the new engine or game it may not be but it does look something very good and very shiny and it must be a testament to how much they are dragging this engine over multiple generations and they really make sure that it still delivers the goods day in day out any cover nest is clear nicely done echo my fucking pleasure sergeant The Coalition delivered a confident and impressive game in Gears 4, but with the fifth entry they made huge strides in utilising Unreal Engine 4, with a game that really shows the best it can muster within the right hands. My in-depth analysis of all versions earlier this year demonstrated how well they push it on dual consoles and high-end PC, with scalability across a huge range and generation of hardware. Much of its impressive tech, high fidelity image quality, sumptuous colour mapping which is further enhanced by HDR is bolstered by a robust dynamic scaler keeping the GPU fully loaded while allowing shorter bursts of resolution reduction to maintain a high refresh rate. 60 FPS on the X and higher still on PC. These tight, scripted and impressive single player games empower teams to create spectacular set pieces and flashy effects and this is no exception. Thrown in abundance of modern effects from SSR, screen space volumes, proxy reflections, dismemberment systems, tessellated snow, PBR based materials, dynamic lights with shadow casters and high sampled per object motion blur. And now fully complete with real time cutscenes with excellent voice acting, high bone rigging on faces enabling strong character animations and emotion to shine through. Now this shift to real time across the entire game also means loading is almost eradicated after the first moments. Unless, of course, you jib out. Now, these segments of story beats are the most striking, with high-quality skin complete with subsurface scattering, many dynamic lights from a deferred pass, and at times could pass for pre-rendered from prior games. Now, although these drop to 30 hertz on the X, you can push past on a beefier rig, but no matter the machine, they look incredible. At 30 on the S or higher on the X, it is easily one of the standout titles on Xbox and now with a full fat PC release day one, the quality of gears has never been so high. My biggest gripe is the gameplay, combat, core loop and progression, which has not really moved as far forward as the graphics, even though it is still a solid shooter and has a superb online multiplayer title, it really delivers the goods, which thankfully deliver 60 FPS across all formats as a baseline. It doesn't really push the single player forward anymore, aside the spectacle and pizzazz that it still delivers in spades. So, devil's cry, huh? That's you what that sounds like! Uh. 
Ever since Dante swung into action on the PS2's Epic in 2001, I have been a die-hard Devil May Cry fanatic. The tight yet skilled combat, intricate timing and parries, segmented battles, just like the arcade scrolling beat-em-ups of yesteryear, and grand gothic style hooked me from the start. In this, the year of Capcom and its phenomenal RE engine, He's never looked so good. From Nero, V, Lady and the man himself, this is nothing short of an artistic work of art. The gothic imagery, hulking bosses, destructible scenery, fluid-like effects, abundant GPU-spawned particles complete with collision, swathes of enemies on screen and weapon add-ons for all occasions. Complete at that silky smooth 60Hz rate proves that RE is the Swiss army knife of game engines. Check out more in my analysis of this title earlier this year. Now why it scores so high on my list is within the character models, the motion captured animation, the dearth of detail across each blemish, whiskered jawline, tattooed midriff or shining buttock, it kicks ass and takes names. I do not exaggerate when I say this can look next gen at times and is easily up with anyone else in the industry at this point. Aided by their entire pipeline being based on photogrammetry and motion capture, this means that segments not only deliver accurate levels of Fresnel, specular reflectance, diffuse lighting and isotropic highlights across skin, leather, hair and more, but the pre-production visualizations of all these sequences acted out complete with amateur dramatic costumes, makeshift effects, clearly demonstrates the full planning and passion that went into each and every shot. Many of the sequences are simply staggering, and although they can cause dips under the target 60fps alongside obvious increases in geometry, lighting accuracy, skin shaders and more, they still flow like a fine wine across the satisfying combat arena's varied boss battles that are only really let down by weak level construction and repetitive backtracking at times. It's its biggest weakness overall as a game. But the tongue-in-cheek, devil-may-care cheesiness is just another piece of the oh-so-delicious cake. So bad, it's amazing. Have you lost your mind? There's a demon to destroy! Kill yourself later! I'll help! If the Yamato can separate man from devil, then what about the rebellion? <laughs> You are absorbing the Sparta! Those pricks from Hansa. I believed that Moscow was controlled by the HQ. That we were under occupation. That we were still in war. 4A Games have long since been one of the most technically proficient teams in the business. Born from the Stalker roots, the splintered off team crafting their own X-Ray engine which would be destined to deliver their 2010 take on Dmitry Klovovsky's 2005 Metro novels. The game, like the books, is a dark, gloomy tale of the Russian Metro system, home to the 50k circus survivors from the post-nuclear fallout, destined to survive underground or with a gas mask. It was a gritty, narrative-driven story that centred on Artyom's journey, flashes of pre-Holocaust life and survival from the mutant beasts, watchmen and those mysterious dark ones. As a first-person action adventure goes, it was and is an absolute classic that secured far more popularity on the PC thanks to its astounding technical chops. And they've delivered and raised the bar yet again. Now I've done all the console compilations already and the PC is really the pinnacle version of them all, including some of the best ray tracing glory that you've seen across any titles. The core game and engine has been significantly enhanced from previous releases though that leave you in no doubt the time away has been well spent. Front and centre is the pipeline and asset shift to a fully realised physically based lighting system. It now achieves a consistent and organic level of light consumption properties that extend beyond the normal metallic wood and skin surfaces. Leather gloves, woven jumpers, sand dunes and engine rooms all exhibit far more convincing levels of specular reflectance, micro facet disturbance, Fresnel, edge lighting, diffuse and emissive properties. Skin absorbs and redirects light via subsurface scattering. Sunlight and torchlight 
also changed the appearance of skin tone and complexion, with a paler, washed out skin becoming more lambert as it lights up, fading to a warmer, pigment filled colour when this is removed. Now this level of energy consumption continues on guns as blend shading mixes within the vertex mesh of objects enabling dirt, blood, dust or snow to accumulate on objects or life forms procedurally. In sheer terms of scale of environment, surface reactions and compositors layers, these are some of the best PBR materials in games at the moment. And that additional icing on the top with the ray tracing light solution really enhances those bounces of light, the shadow casting and all the ambient occlusion that you don't get from standard screen space solutions really convince here and it shows you the future that ray tracing can really deliver once it's maximized to push beyond just simple better reflections. It is exceptionally beautiful looking game and technically it's one of the best running on any machine out there. It really falls down in its artistic style, some of the animation issues and general glitchier moments that lower the tone and lower the quality, but nothing distracts from the best Metro title by far and clearly 4A's best game they've ever made. Onwards and upwards I'm sure for the team, but if you have and have got a lust to play some first person shooters, the Metro Exodus really delivers in spades and visually you'd struggle to find a better looking first person shooter. Just don't kill me! Now. Uh, remember what I told you. There was an ex- Enough chatter! <laughs>years the fact Hideo Kojima has managed to quit his day job, jump ship from Konami and set up an independent team and studio, take a road trip with the father of the PS4, borrow Guerrilla Games' remarkable Decima engine and still get home in time to ship one of the best games of 2019 is nothing short of remarkable. Even more, there's he managed to deliver a triple A quality game on nothing more than a video game version of The Postman. Visually, this is one of the best looking games this generation by far. The broad range of character model details, Kojima Productions' own proprietary facial capture and topology scanning system, the silky smooth animation, photo realistic scenery, excellent character design and strong artistic direction, and one of the most engaging and compelling cinematic and camera directions in the medium just still suffers from editing somebody else needs to edit Hideo Kojima's work that's for sure as a tail end PS4 title though it stands out and leads in many aspects and the ever consistent and impeccable balance of performance and minimalistic use of GPU resources yet broad range of effects raises the bar on materials and physically based materials the best looking walking simulator yet made and this really is a walking simulator. As a fan of most of Hideo's and his team's work, I can say that Death Stranding was not looking to light my fire like Metal Gear Solid has done. Although it is a very different game to that, it still shares the same DNA and as I covered in my review, it feels more like an extension of Snake Eater than Metal Gear Solid 5 ever did. 
It hooks with a strange and intriguing story with characters and striking ones at that. That although the writing is better and the performances are the best yet of a Kojima production game, it still has weaker areas that let it down at points. The sum of its parts make for a game that really changes your perception on what is enjoyable in a game, what you should do and even how you should play it. A thinking man's insert here is a cop out most of the time and maybe again here but it sums it up as best I can. You really do think and reflect on things while you wander across country, build roads, fight oil filled squids while soothing babies in a jam jar. As absurd as it is confusing, you can tar his games with many things, but by the book, formulaic and predictable, he's never on those lists. The visual quality, the character models and the intricate details in some of the real-time cinematics are absolutely beyond compare and sometimes you are completely convinced that this is a pre-rendered CGI. One of the most striking of games I have played to completion and after nearly 45 years of games this is a treasure to prize and Sony must also be praised for helping fund my second best game of 2019. And it really is far from a safe bet. So my number one is not really a surprise I would imagine to most people that heard me wax lyrical about it earlier in the year. Capcom have been and remain to be one of my top studios and publishers ever. At one point they owned the horror and fighting game genres and led the pack with a triumphant shift from arcade to console powerhouse. My number one game is the same 1998 title that vied for it back then. The very fact that I can start this video running on the Xbox One S shows you how good Capcom has been with their RE engine and Resident Evil 2 is an absolute work of art. The original was a revolutionary leap over its predecessor and the remake this year managed to exceed my already lofty expectations throughout the updated and altered take on this groundbreaking format. From a visual perspective, the RE engine has become one of the most applauded and impressive engines this generation. Rising from the ashes of the deep down game and Panther Ray engine that was at the centre, this took Capcom from a studio that had struggled to adapt at the start of this generation to one that is now firmly at the sharp end. The use of photogrammetry, photographed basically to materials and assets, improves all characters, objects and gore while making the most of the limited resources within the consoles and reducing the production time yet raising the quality. It still manages to scale up on more powerful consoles or PC and right from Resident Evil 7 targeting 60 FPS must also be praised when many studios would halve that to ease the processing and development time. From a purely technical perspective, the engine over delivers on PBR materials. It's got some of the best procedural animation and dismemberment in real time rendering. Impressive dynamic lighting, dense object count and physics interaction, voxel based volumetric fog, great image quality, high frame rates finished off with excellent art direction, grotesque creatures design and topology morphing models that never steps over the realms of which it operates. I spent much of my long and multiple playthroughs manipulating the core game design, system features and admiring the visual splendour on offer. It's not just what it's rendering on screen, it's the amount of interactions and the artistic balance of that within all the scenes. It really impresses throughout the gameplay just how much is going on and it's not just on a visual perspective but also a physics animation perspective which I would argue that Capcom at this level are really pushing close to Naughty Dog level 
levels of animation, you've seen what the quality they've generated in real-time cinematics from Devil May Cry 5, which I think are better than what they are in Resident Evil 2 here, but the general consistency of those real-time cinematics and in-game quality and all of the interactions really push it above anything else because of the consistency throughout the title. It rarely has any weak spots that you pick up other than some of the effects in the game such as the SSR and sometimes some of the character morphing and blending can be a little bit of a, a glitchy moment but aside those areas it really does a great job and not only this but it also keeps central what makes a great game story and horror setting slowly building the tension playing with your expectations both from the original and for new players panic comes from the urgency some moments force you into puzzles that challenge you at times a careful balance of fight or flight instinct and a consistent ability to build the horror and challenge while slowly empowering you as you grow with it. For me, it is the perfect remake of any game I can recall in recent memory, staying faithful to the origins yet adding so much more on top that just enhances what was already present while adding a new twist. It also stands proud as a great example of just how much graphics and audio presentation can add and enhance a game's impact and enjoyment. Horror, for me, has never looked so damn gorgeous. Jesus Christ! With that, Capcom take the top spot and the end of my top 10 of 2019. Sorry this one was late, but for various reasons, I just haven't had much time over the last few weeks to do much content. But hopefully, this is something I will put to bed in 2020 where things really start ramping up and I will be improving and enhancing my quality. And this is just the start of that. Did you like the list? Did you enjoy what I put in the list? Was it the right order, the wrong order, completely the wrong games? After all, you guys and girls can comment below in the comments section. But for now, I'm out. And Capcom is king of the hill. I'll catch you on the next one. Lower it. FBI. Sorry. Thank you. For your help. Surprised you made it this far.